amen. You know, I was, I was, uh, I was young when I got married. I got married, amen. And then all that other stuff was for them. I just wanted the, the wedding, the reception, and all that. That was from other people. I was ready to go after they said, "I pronounce you man and wife." Y'all ain't gonna help me. Let me do. Let me do. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Amen. This is a powerful book that my wife wrote. Amen. Entitled Bibleholic. Amen. Addicted to the Word of God. This book right here will bless you. Amen. Show you how to get in the Word. Get the nuggets. Amen. My wife tells you all the places that she searched. Amen. To get the Word. And uh, if you ever heard Dr. Cindy preach, you all know. Amen. That she's not a surface preacher. Amen. She like she like to go with the, uh, with she like to go where the pearls are. Real deep. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for her. And she'll bless you in a tremendous way. That'll bless you in a tremendous way. This book right here is The Bed is Undefined. Amen. A man, Pastor Cindy, wrote this book years ago. Amen. Uh, the Bed is Undefined. It's a, it's a Christian guide to sexual fulfillment in marriage. I ain't going to say no more because then I'll be ready to dismiss. All right. Amen. Then, uh, right here. Amen. This is Dr. Silly's uh, bestseller. Amen. Actually, it went international uh, probably a couple of months ago. Amen. More than that now. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody brought this across the waters. Amen. Entitled, The Spirit of the Concubine. Amen. And it talks about, amen, uh, really talks about not selling them from cr for crumbs. Amen. Counterfeits. Amen. Or concub concubines. Amen. It's really a, it's the spirit of a concubine. Me and, me and Dr. Cindy did an uh, interview on national TV uh, not long ago. Amen. And, uh, uh, amen. The, the, the host of the show asked us, well, how do you feel about the spirit of the, uh, of the concubine? He, he was asking me. I said, well, you know, it's a spirit. I said, that spirit is in men and women. How many of y'all know a spirit is not, is not male nor female? A spirit is a spirit. And you can be a man or a woman, amen, and settle for less than what God really wants you to have. Amen. So this book right here will bless you in a tremendous way. Amen. Amen. I guess I can give one of these away. Who wanted it? I think, I think you're on the second row. I think you... You put your hand up first. Y'all must knew I was going to do that. Y'all quick up in here. What? I might have to give away another book. Let me see. No, that's all right. I'm finished. <laughs> Amen. You want the book to be out in the back? For a small fee. <laughs> Amen. Everybody say praise God. Amen. Let's go pay our hearts. I want to thank God for my partner in the gospel. Will y'all give up for Dr. Silly? That's the one I love for ever and ever. I want to thank God for all the ministers, elders, amen, all the ministers, pastors in the house on today. God bless all of you in your prospective places. Amen. The kingdom of God wouldn't be what it is without leadership. And so I want to thank God for all the leadership in the body of Christ. Those of you that hold positions in this church, God bless you. Be faithful, amen, until the end. Amen. And there's a blessing with your name on it because of your faithfulness. Somebody say amen. amen. Get your Bibles and make this Bible confession with me. Say, this is my Bible. Is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hero. In my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Luke chapter number five, familiar passage of scripture, and I believe, amen, God will say something to us here, amen, that will be a tremendous blessing to us. Luke, the fifth chapter, Luke chapter number five. Now I want to begin reading right there in verse number one. Just going to read a few verses, amen, and then we'll get right where, amen, the Lord wants us to be on tonight. The, the Bible reads like this in chapter number five. It said, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drop. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have, what? Toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word.
word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were, and all that were with him at the drop of fishes which they had taken. And so it was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. On, on for these next few moments, amen, I want to minister from the subject. God is preparing you for your next level. God is preparing you for your next level. Amen. I want to start off simply by saying, amen, no matter where you are right now, it's a place of preparation and celebration at the same time. You just have to divine, you just have to define, amen, what you're supposed to be doing at what time. Amen. I remember, I remember, amen, pastoring and, 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 and uh, coming to times of celebration, coming to times, amen, of appreciation. But I remember uh, those days, many of those days, uh, as a visionary, you always see where you're going. As a visionary, you always can see down the road. Amen. And sometimes if you're not careful, amen, uh, you'll, you'll be, you'll, you won't be celebrating that time that you should be celebrating. And one time I was in the anniversary service, I was, I was excited, but I also was discouraged. Because in my view, y'all ain't going to help me in here. I saw myself way down the world. Amen. And so this was a time that I should have been celebrating, but I, was, I wasn't celebrating. I was disappointed. And God had to stop me. And God stopped me in the middle of looking way down the road. And God said, son, look back. And I looked back. And I saw how far we came, and I looked. Oh, amen. I had to change my posture. Y'all ain't going to help me here. I had to change, amen, my countenance. Y'all ain't going to help me here. I had to change the way I was looking at things. And I come to tell you, amen, that all of us in this place right now, wherever you are, I don't care where you are, I don't care what you possess, I don't care what position that you're in right now, amen, I want you to know that it's a time of celebration. And preparation. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And uh, how many of y'all know that God is preparing you for something so much greater than what you have right now? Yes. Thank God for where we are. Amen. But this ain't. This is not my stopping place. Yes. Amen. I'm gonna celebrate right here. Y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm gonna dance about where God has brought me from. Amen. But I also know in my knower, Amen, that there's something else more that God has for me. Yes. Amen. Glory. Oh, I feel like preaching. I feel like telling somebody in this place, don't get stuck. Sometimes you can get stuck And sometimes it's easy to get stuck Looking at other folk Looking at where other people are And you're so much of, you're so far ahead of other people If you're not careful you'll get stuck By comparing yourself with somebody else God never calls you to compare yourself With somebody else As a matter of fact if you want to do any Amen if you want to do any comparing Just compare yourself with yourself Y'all ain't going to help me in here Amen Because the truth of the matter is All us know how, amen, to operate in the level that we're in right now. Yeah, you've been here long enough to know how to operate there. Come on, somebody. You know how to sing the song without a hitch. Amen. You've seen that before. Glory to God. But how many of y'all know there's, a, there's another level? There's another place that God want to bring you. Somebody said, well, well, you know, I can learn new songs too, but how about the place where God want to give you, amen, the ability to write? <laughs> is preparing you for the next level and there is a next level you just can't be afraid to go there when you're a visionary amen you say what you see when you really don't see it with your natural eyes your pastor saw this building before he got it he just bounced up in here he had to see it in his spirit Glory to God. And uh, come on, even when he did the negotiation to get the building and all that, it still was a challenge. Because every level produces different challenges. As a matter of fact, if, 
if you want another level and you're, uh, come on, if you want another level and you're dealing with the same devils, that ain't no another level, that's just another part of the level that you were on. Because every level produced blue devils. Yeah, you're going to be challenged with something that you never faced before. Glory to God. Some of us know how. We know how to be where we are. We know how to handle this level. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Glory to God. I was just trying to think. I was trying to think about levels. Amen. Glory to God. Well, when you look at the caterpillar, the caterpillar is a level. Come on, that's a crawling level. Y'all ain't going to help me. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. As a matter of fact, the caterpillar is also that level where you're rejected. Glory to God. But when you can see your future. You ain't tripping over the people that's not trying to catch you as a caterpillar. That's going to hear some of y'all going up 321 later on. You never saw somebody trying to catch a caterpillar. Ain't nobody trying to catch a caterpillar. Amen. The caterpillar stage is a rejection stage. Nobody don't want you little fuzzy crawling. Everybody wants you. <laughs> They're going to let me preach here in a minute. Glory to God, but how many of y'all know that's one phase? And we're not even tripping plus because we're being rejected. I wish I had the right church. Because how many of y'all know? Because we know on the inside of us is a, is a butterfly. Yeah. You rejected me now, but the day is going to come when you're going to get your little hat and get your magnifying glass and your neck and you're going to be trying to catch you. That's a stage of attraction. That's when you get your color. That's when you get your win. That's when everybody want to be around you. Glory to God. You got to understand, you go through that caterpillar stage, that caterpillar, amen, goes through a whole nother transition and end up being a cocoon, amen, and then, amen, in the cocoon, amen, comes the birth of the butterfly. The butterfly was already there, but now comes the manifestation. I feel like having church here. Amen. Glory to God. As God is trying to bring you to your place of manifestation. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God's trying to give you your colors. God's trying to give you your wings. I know you haven't soared already, but you're about to soar. You're about to fly. Somebody feel like flying in here. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. So God is preparing us. God is preparing us. Amen. I like this uh, text that I read on today. It's an awesome text. Amen. Uh, the scripture lets us know, amen, that Jesus is teaching. Amen. We look at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Amen. This is the time that Jesus is calling his disciples. He's calling, amen, men to follow him. He's preparing men, amen, for what is to come up the road. Amen. And here, uh, we see that uh, the multitude was following Jesus. You have to understand that, amen, in all Jewish towns, they had synagogues. So Jesus was preaching in the synagogue. Amen. But when they got to the place where they looked like they didn't want to hear him there, amen, often he would go and preach in other places, off sites from the synagogue. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Glory to God. And so, Jesus is actually teaching the people, and watch this, amen, the whole message is birth because the people pressed upon it. My God, and I'm telling you right now as a preacher, and I know our, our pastors know, I know these preachers know, amen, that when people press on you for a word, it's different than you just delivering some notes. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. There's a difference because when people press then God opens you up and you become an open heaven. Yes. And you start saying stuff that's not on your notes. Right. Oh, going, the Bible said, watch this, the, the Bible said they press not for fame, not for a reputation. They pressed upon him for a word. Yeah. They wanted to hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. They wanted to hear him expound scriptures. And the Bible said Jesus started teaching them And there were some fishermen They had a boat, amen, glory to God And he was teaching, but he was among them Amen, and so he wanted to make a stage platform So he called unto one of the fishermen And his name was Simon Glory to God, he said I want to use your boat Simon, glory to God, amen And uh, when Simon came in the boat Amen, you have to understand that Jesus uh, recognized, amen, his first state His first state, his name was Simon Simon is the name that's given to Amen, the flesh part of, of Peter, come on somebody it, This is fleshly name, this, this, this is the name That he called Peter when Peter is Operating in his weakness as a matter of fact, amen, really when you see Simon, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the definitions that's connected to his name is Reed. And it means that he is shaped. 
Yeah, he, he's a shaky man. He, he's easily moved. Y'all ain't going to help me there. Amen. He don't have no real foundation. Amen. He's easily moved. Come on. Somebody talk about him. He don't come to church for three weeks. Amen. He's signing. Come on, somebody. He, he's shaky. He's shaky. Amen. Amen. Easily disappointed. Y'all going to help me have church. Easily disappointed. Easy to back up. Can't take stuff. Amen. His name is Simon. Glory to God. But Jesus, amen, Jesus mess around and give him a new name on the spot. And so your name ain't Simon. Your name is Peter. Glory to God. In other words, I'm going to call you Rock. And the reason why Jesus called Simon Peter, amen, because Jesus was seeing into his next level. Glory to God. He said, you're a little shaky now, but you ain't going to always be safe. Come on, you easily move now, but you ain't going to always be that. I got another level for you, and your next level is called Rock. Somebody gonna help me preach? Amen. And so watch this. Amen. Peter uh, allowed Jesus to use his ship. Jesus got finished. Amen. Uh, got finished preaching his sermon, teaching his lesson. Amen. And after he got finished teaching his lesson, amen, uh, he looked at Peter and says, he said, Peter, now launch out into the deep. Amen. He lets Peter know that I'm about to do something new for you. I'm about to do something different. Launch out into the deep. Amen. And anytime God tells you to launch out into the deep, he's about to show you something that you've never experienced. Yes, Come on. Amen. The Bible said deep calleth unto deep. Uh -huh. Amen. There's some things that God wants to show you that you ain't getting in three foot of water. Uh -huh. I really got to preach that in the church because some of, a lot of church folk like to stay around the three feet level. Uh -huh. Can I go ahead and preach? You know, I'm from the projects in Hartford, Connecticut, amen, and we used to do our swimming, and when you swam, amen, the three-foot, well, we ain't have no private pool, oh, y'all thought we had a private pool, no, I was from the projects. We all had a pool together. The pool was for everybody in the neighborhood. They're going to let me preach in here in a minute. Glory to God. Amen. And when you would go swimming, amen, the crowd would always be in the shadow end. Amen. Come on, you can't even get your swim. <laughs> you can't even get your swim on in three feet. Come on, somebody. And y'all know some of us, I, I, I ain't looking at nobody, but some of us, when we swim, we swim with our eyes closed. Because in the pool that we went to, they had to put a whole lot of chlorine in there. That'll come to you down the road too. Come on. Amen. And so if you open your eyes while you were swimming, come on somebody. Your eyes will start burning. Burning. Oh my goodness. It's burning. Glory to God. And so some of y'all was like me. You swim with your eyes closed. Amen. And you can't get your swim on in the shallow water with your eyes closed because you're going to be bumping into people, hitting people. Bumping into people. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me here. There's a whole lot of saints like hanging around a shallow wall. Amen. Glory to God. But God, God wants to show you something that is supernatural. And he can't show you that where everybody is. Everybody ain't going to get this revelation. You got to go into the deep place to get this. God told Peter, he said, launch out into the deep. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus said, launch out into the deep. And when you get out there, let down your nets. Amen. Let me just, uh, let me just, if I can, let me just deal with that just a little bit. Because what I really want to tell you, amen, is you have to understand that this ain't no time to be playing, Jesus. Because after all, I've been out here all night. And I really didn't want to let you use my boat. Okay, let me, let me. I, I got to help the saints. I got to help. I really didn't want to let you use your boat. Not because I'm not courteous, but because I'm tired. I've been out all night, and I've been waiting for them trying to get some fish, and I ain't caught nothing. And so, y'all want you nothing. That's right, nothing. Not, not nothing, nothing. Okay? I'm tired. I've been fishing all night, and I ain't kept nothing. And I was over there washing my nets so I can go home and get some sleep. And here you come with this crowd. And while, while Peter was washing his nets, he was kind of like listening at what Jesus was saying. And how many of y'all know the words of Jesus stir up faith? And I really don't want to be here, but since your words were so good, I will let you use my boat. Y'all ain't going to help me here. But I thought I was going to stop there. And now you got the nerve to tell me who's tired after being out here all night to, to go out into the deep and then let down the nets. You talking? Hold up, Jesus. Yes, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find somebody to preach to in a minute. <laughs> hold up, Jesus. You mean you 
want me to let down these nets that I just cleaned after being out here all night and I didn't even catch a goldfish. Anybody ever want to put your hand on something? Anybody ever put your hand on something and you were looking to, for a big catch and you ain't catch nothing? Y'all know that's aggravating. As a matter of fact, when you have those days, you don't even want your friends to see you. Because you, 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 your, your demeanor is off. You don't want nobody to see you. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me in here. You go to the car dealership and get a car, and they tell you your credit ain't good. You don't want to see nobody coming out of that room. You come out that little car dealership. Everybody else come out there with smiling and they got the little key, they got their due date, come back and pick it up tomorrow, and now you've been turned down, and you come out of that little cubby hole, come on somebody. They don't sit the manager in there, they don't sit the assistant manager in, they don't sit the manager in, everybody trying to help you, and your credit still say, nah. When you come out of that little cubby hole, you don't want to see nobody, and who shows up but Sister Mary Lou? And y'all know how Sister Mary Lou is. I hope it ain't no Mary Lou here. Y'all know Mary Lou asks all the questions. And she's so nosy, she should have a big nose. <laughs> and you know she's going to tell everybody. And as soon as she see you come out of that little cubby hole, she said, what kind of car you get? Did you get it? What color? What's the one you picking? You feel just like Peter. You want to say, hold up, Mary Lou. This ain't about me. Why are you here? You telling me to let down my neck. You go in your cubby hole. Let me mind my cubby hole business. Y'all gonna help me out church in a minute, huh? I'm just about to I'm just. So Peter, Peter was really going through. But you know, God really helped him. Jesus really helped him because you know, we can all be, we all have come to church in that domain. There's many times we come to service, amen, disappointed. Not disappointed with the Lord, because the Lord ain't doing nothing. We disappointed with the works of our hands. We disappointed because we have not been productive. We disappointed because we set out to do something and failed. It didn't work for us. Come on, all of us have come to church disappointed. That's the reason why praise and worship is so powerful. That's the reason why you got to be in church. Church helps you to deal with those disappointments. Praise and worship helps you to elevate your mind. Praise and worship take your mind to a place that you can't get to it no otherwise. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. When you get in a good praise like we were on tonight, how many of y'all know you're able to see past? Get in a good praise and worship service, you see past the cubby, the cubby. You see past the, come on, uh, come on, you see past the not approved. You start seeing I can drive whatever I want to drive. I can have whatever God says I can have. I am the blessed. Glory to God. Come on, nothing changed from yesterday to today. All of a sudden, only thing changes is what's on the inside of you. Because you start seeing your next level. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. And you start saying, I eat the best. I drive the best. I live in the Ooh. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Glory to God. God is just preparing you for your next level. My God, you just got turned down yesterday, but it didn't stop where you are. Glory to God, you still said, but I'm going. I need some folk in here that can see from where you are to where you're going. I need somebody to be able to see right from where you are. I can see myself driving in it. I can see myself living in it. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Glory to God. I can see myself. I, you know, uh, some of us, we had, we had places, we had homes and, and never had a garage. And I got my first garage. Come on, somebody. I, I drove my car up in it. Come on, I always had to go home. And we had some neighbors in the house that I was in before I moved out. I moved now. And when we had some neighbors, as soon as your car pull up, they hit them all they can. Then the mother get over there. 
you know, and uh, the house is real close, so they get to you. You can't, you can't like sneak through. You can't be like go in, pop the car, and go to the front door, put the key in the door, and get in before they get to you. If they don't catch you at the car, they will catch you. Or come on, walking up the parking lot, up the sidewalk. Yeah, here come the mothers. <laughs> Whole family run up to you. I mean, y'all know we got to be friendly. But well, you don't want. <laughs> okay, let me move. I mean, I'm just, I'm just talking. So you know, Amen. So when I got my first garage, come on, I got my garage, Amen. Come on, I hit the button. They can't even catch me. What? <laughs> Zoom around in that parking lot. <laughs> hit the button. Matter of fact, I hit it before I turn the corner. You know. <laughs> hit that button. You go in there and turn it. Come on, get that car in there. Hit the button. Ain't no neighbors. <laughs> Ain't no neighbors. If you want to talk to me, meet me in the yard when I'm out there. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, right? Huh? <laughs> But how many of y'all know you got to be able to see the garage before you get it? I, I don't need everybody. I just need a few folk, amen, that can see your house with a walk-in closet. Yeah. Not everybody. I just, I just want somebody that can see yourself walking in your closet yeah. and looking around. Yeah. Now, you know it's big when you can look around. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know you arrived when you got a panoramic view. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all know y'all sisters. Come on, sister, sisters. Yeah. Sister, sister. Y'all yeah. know you need room for your shoes. Yeah. Come on. But why are you going in the closet that you got now and you're digging for? Yeah. You got to see the walk in. They're going to let me preach that whole while. They're going to let me preach. They're going to let me preach. I know you got the you got to see your next level. You got to see it before you get there. When you first get to the next level, you ain't gonna have clothes all around anyhow. You just gonna have enough clothes. But don't worry about it. After a while, you gonna have all your clothes. Have your closet color scheme. Lord, the sisters getting happy in this service. The sisters getting happy. I love being around sisters. The sisters got faith. Sisters believe God for something bigger than what they have. Tell me, them sisters ain't no joke. Thank God for the sisters in church. I don't want to mess up my message. Thank God for the ladies in the church. The ladies don't play that. We say we go to the next level and the, we, 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 we announce that we go to the next level. The sisters say, Shh. Love them sisters. Them sisters say, let's go, Pastor. You said, you said we go to the next level. Hallelujah. And before you can say, Luya, the sisters say, Luya. Sisters don't play that. Thank God for the sisters. Thank God for the sisters in the body of Christ. They make the difference. Amen. I ain't going to bother y'all, but amen, but I thank God for the sisters. So watch this. I, I said all that to say this. Uh, Peter wasn't, Peter was, he was going through. He was dealing with some stuff, but he obeyed God even in his go-through state. Y'all going to let me preach? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. And so watch this. When, when Jesus told him to launch out into the deep and let down his nets, amen, Peter tried, amen, all he could to explain to God, amen, to explain to Jesus that we've been out here all night and we have toiled. And that word toil, amen, jumps out at me because it really deals with work. We, we, we were sweating. We were laboring to catch fish. We toiled all night long when he was really trying to let Jesus know how to work the third ship. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Amen. But watch this. But he, he changed his attitude. Amen. He said, well, we toiled all night long and we didn't catch nothing. He said, but nevertheless, at your word, I will. I don't know why I feel like prophesying here on tonight and telling somebody, you need to let down your nets. You need to let down your nets. 
I know you're toiled and you tried to get to a place before you got there and wasn't able to get there. It was disappointment. Amen. You was expecting something to happen that didn't happen. Something that you was looking to come through didn't come through. It fell through. Glory to God. But I hear the Lord saying, let down your neck. And I like the way Jesus put it. He said, let down your neck for a drop. In other words, I don't care what you did before now. Let down your neck because you're about to catch something. Whoa. I feel like telling somebody, let it down because you're about to catch something. Yes, sir. You're about to catch something. Hallelujah. I know it's been toiled up until this point. Glory to God, but I came to tell you, let down your necks because you're about to catch something. Amen. Glory to God. So watch this. This, 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 uh, this request from Jesus really is a request for preparation. It's preparing him for another level. Come on, he's all one level, but Jesus makes a request. And this request that the Lord is making to you today is a request for your next level. Let down your neck. Come on, somebody. Learn how to cook. No, 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 this is a request. Learn how to pay bills. Learn how to get a job and stay on. Because you about to get a job. <laughs> I'm going to move, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, I'm going to move. How many of y'all know we got to let down our neck for a drop? Yeah. Amen. Let down your neck because you're about to catch something. I don't know, all the jobs I go on, they just, they just act up. I, I, I just can't handle these jobs. These people don't do it the way you're supposed to do it. You ain't here to tell them how to do it. Right. Learn how to keep a job. Yes, sir. Come here, got the whole church so interrupting our service talking about how you got a new job hey, we, we, come on. We, we knocking down speakers knocking, rearranging chairs and we come in here and then you come back and say I lost my job don't be messing up our service if you can't keep a job yes, next time you get a job we ain't shopping until you had it for at least six months I gotta get out of the way. Matter of fact, we ain't shouting. Matter of fact, you can't even get on the program. We ain't hearing your testimony. You gonna have to live this one out. We don't went through this too much. You got seven W twos in one year. You messed up our service six times, and you got the nerve to come up the seventh time talking about seven is God numbers of completion. No, we ain't shouting for you. Don't play for them. Don't give no drums, no music, no synthesizer, no bass guitar. We ain't shouting for them. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. Let down your neck for a drop. You got to let down your neck. Because this time, you're going to be successful. This time, you're going to keep your job. This time, you ain't going to go in there and try to run the job. You're going to work the way they told you to work. All right, y'all, let's move. Let's move. I don't know how I got off into that. Everybody okay? Let me get myself back together. You gonna work your job, amen. Amen, glory to God. He, he said, we toiled all night long and we haven't caught nothing, anything, amen. But we gonna let down our net at your word. And the Bible said when they, did, when they obeyed God, amen, and let down their net, they, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, amen, so much to the, fa the, fa the to a place, amen, that their net broke. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, I, I, I always want to just run around and church on that. Amen. Because it really says, when you prepare for the next level, God won't just give you a blessing, but he'll give you an overflowing blessing. He says, when, when there's preparation, and come on, when there's preparation for where you're going, amen, you, not, you ain't going to just have a trickle, just to, just to die but do you, amen, but you're going to have an overflowing blessing. And when you prepare for your blessing, amen, you ain't going to just get blessed enough for you and your folk. But you're going to be able to bless somebody else around you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. So Jesus told him, let down your net, amen, uh, for a uh, 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 catch, amen. You're going to have it. You're going to catch a drop. Amen. I like this. Amen. Uh, what this text shows us, and I'm just about finished, this text shows us that God uses ordinary people. Glory to God. Just because you're a Simon don't make God push you aside. Just because you're a little shaky. I think all of us were shaky when we started. Y'all gonna help me at church? I think all of us had a little shakiness in it. Amen. Some of us had a little shaky. Some of us were shaky and flaky. 
Amen. But God gonna push you aside because you're a little shaky. Come on, somebody. God gonna push you aside, amen, because you ain't all the way there. Come on. I I've been places where people, they don't want you unless you have arrived. According to their de definition. But I'm so glad that God don't do us like that. God don't push you aside because you're not there. And you know why? Because God knows that the level you're on right now, that ain't the level you're going to stay on. I hear God saying, I'll take you where you are. Because I know you ain't going to ain't gonna keep you there. And God said at every level, I'm doing some preparation. I feel like preaching right now because I want to tell somebody, God's preparing you for something bigger than you right now. You don't understand it? And a lot of times when God is preparing us, when God is preparing us for where he's taking us, a lot of times, if you're not careful, you'll think the devil after you. So glad that God uses ordinary people. He uses ordinary people. You ain't got to have a name, amen, for God to use you. Come on, but if you do it God's way and let God prepare. If you do it God's way and let God prepare. Yes. God will take you with no name and give you a great name. Yeah. And somebody will be trying to figure out where you come from. Yeah. Look like it happened overnight. Yeah. It ain't happened overnight. You just wasn't there in my preparation stage. Yeah. God is preparing. I'm so glad that God uses ordinary people. Yeah. That's what makes me qualify. Because I'm ordinary. Come on, somebody. I ain't trying to be special and trying to be, come on, brand new. I just want to be used by God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Amen. When God called, amen, the Lord showed me something, uh, uh, Dr. Felder. God showed me something when, uh, when God called Isaiah. Isaiah said, amen, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And y'all know, amen, his train filled the temple. And y'all know, in those days, amen, uh, in, in the Bible's days, uh, kings would actually go out to war. Y'all know that, right? Because David was supposed to be out to war when he messed up with Bathsheba, right? He was supposed to be at war. It was a time when they went out to war. They didn't war. They didn't do warfare in the winter time, but they waited for spring. Actually, war war time was a, a time. That war happened in sea. And so David was supposed to go out in war when all the other kings went out to war, but he was chilling and he sent somebody else to do his work. But what would happen is when kings would win battles, when kings would win battles, the longer their train, amen, come on, the longer their train was, that showed you how bad they were. In other words, when the, when the king came in and his train, because what would happen is he would come in with his role, and every time he got the victory over somebody, he would cut their role and add it to his role. So when the king walked in with a long robe, and every, come on, all the time you see that robe changing colors, it means he beat somebody out. So Isaiah said, I saw the Lord, he was high and lifted up. Come on, and uh, come on, and his train filled the temple. Come on, amen. God walked in the temple and his train just kept coming. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. How do y'all know we serve a God that can't lose battle? He win every time. And if God be funny. You better be glad you got God on your side. I'm willing because I got God with me. No weapon formed against me, Father. Glory to God. I put my where I need to be. Amen. God uses ordinary people. Amen. Not only do God use ordinary people, but God uses persevering people. God uses people that, that's willing to go the extra mile. People that's willing to keep on going. I said people that's willing to keep on going. I said God uses people that's willing to keep on going. And sometimes that's all God wants you to do. How I many of y'all know you can't stop because there's some rain coming on? You can't stop because the battle is raging? Come on somebody. You can't stop because of a little bit of opposition? You can't stop amen because of a storm? God uses people that know how to press up in. Get to the next level because I ain't stop. Yeah. I'm gonna get to the next level because I ain't stop. Yeah. God uses people that are persevering. God is looking for people that will persevere to the next level. Amen. Peter was tired, but he kept going. Yeah. 
Come on, he could have had another attitude, but he kept going. He persevered. And that's what we got to do. We pray for this generation that we have right now. This generation, amen, the Bible said in the last days, they will be weaker and wiser. We got some smart people, but they ain't got no get up and go. Pastor, Pastor, we have to pray, amen, we have to pray that God teaches us how to rebuke these young people different. Like you got to give them two lollipops and a pickle. They come out, I got to tell you something, but here, take the lollipops first. You like pickles? Here, here's a little pickle. My mother used to give all, all the beatings in our house. Hey Amen. My father didn't have to beat me. All he did was look at me. We had a friend in my neighborhood. His name was Nate. Nate Woods. He lived at the corner house on our street. And his father would come down south and buy boxes of cigarettes. And he had boxes of cigarettes in his in his closet, just boxes, stacked up. And Nate was bring, he would bring all of us, all of his friends. We would all go to his house and then we'd be digging, moving back clothes. And he'd give all of us a carton of cigarettes. They were camel cigarettes without a butt. Them cigarettes were so strong and nasty. I ain't never really been a smoker, but I, that was my um, that was my stint of smoking. I never inhaled, and I couldn't. I ain't know how to get the smoke to come out of the nose. So I just did with everybody else. You know when folk was tripping, hey man, anytime you see 20 people and all of them got a cigarette, they, they, they knew. They don't know where they're going, and they probably go to church. <laughs> church folk are like, all right, let me move. Hey man, one day, hey man, I had my cigarettes, and I was down in our basement, and I put the cigarette in my mouth, the old candle went over. And I went to light the cigarette, and when I lit the cigarette, my father came right to the door. I was standing right in the door. I have enough sister. I was standing right in the door. <laughs> hey, I froze. But the fire didn't freeze. I was so stunned my father caught me. I ain't spit the cigarette out. I ain't blow the match out. I just stood there and froze. My father said, boy, what you doing? I wanted to lie and tell him I was fixing the bike tire. <laughs> hey, man, I woke up when the match almost burnt my finger. <laughs> Dropped the cigarette out of my mouth. Y'all ain't gonna help me. My father ain't even with me. He just told me off. He told me enough. He told me off enough that I ain't, I ain't smoking no more than cigarettes. These kids these days, they can't, they, you come on, you tell them to clean their word, you tell them to clean their room in a, a, a pitch higher than you normally talk. And they start crying and getting nervous. <laughs> like you told them to go and build a cathedral. <laughs> you told them to make the bed that they sleep in. Yeah. All, right. All right, let me move on. Right. Yeah. I got to quit right here, I got to quit right here. Amen. I know I got to go. Amen. But I want I wanted to go somewhere. Amen. But I just want to tell you that Peter, Peter, amen, he caught a whole lot of fish and he got so blessed that he was able to bless somebody else. Called to his friends. Amen. John and James told him, come on over with us. Amen. I got too much fish. And they came over too. Amen. And after they got finished catching the fish, Peter realized, amen, that he was connected. Come on to a supernatural man. Glory to God. He realized that Jesus was no ordinary person. I feel like having church right here. He realized that Jesus was better than Confucius. Come on, somebody. Amen. Muhammad. Come on, somebody. I know they weren't around at that time, but let's let me preach like I'm preaching. 
Revelation. Glory to God. Jesus was better than any other deity that's out there. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Glory to God. He realized that Jesus was supernatural. And after he got finished catching his fish, after all of that, he looked at the whole ordeal. Glory to God. And he felt a little bad that he had an attitude that Jesus told him to go out into the deep. Y'all ain't And he got down on his knees and said, Lord, be merciful to me. A, a, a sinner. He said, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And this is what I want to tell you. When we get in the presence of the Lord, we see ourselves. So Isaiah said, when I, when I, when Uz, when Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple, going to God, and he and he said, I saw the seraphims and cherubims flying. And he says, he says, and I realized that I'm a man of unclean lips. Watch this, but I got to tell you something. This is what the Lord showed me, Amen. That when he saw that he was a man of unclean lips, he didn't keep going. He admitted, he said, God, I'm a man of unclean lips. He made a confession. And when he confessed to the Lord his inadequacy, they took the coal off the altar and put it on his mouth. In other words, they dealt with his weakness. We got a lot of preachers that get in the presence of the Lord and just say, here am I, sinner. No, we need to deal with your junk. No, no, we need to deal. We need to deal with your mess, so you won't become a scandal. So your name won't be blasted. You need to go back and deal with the live code. You need to get the live code, a, a code applied to your area of weakness. So when you do go, come on, you go in right fashion. You just say, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. And watch this. Jesus said unto him, from now on, you're going to catch me. Can I preach? Amen. This is at Jesus, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Amen. We shoot across. Amen. Over across. We go down the lane and turn that, take that right. Amen. To Luke, the 22nd chapter. Then we see where Jesus come back to Peter and says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He said, but I pray for you that your faith don't fail. I pray for you that you're going to be successful. I pray for you not to be a failure. And he said, when you get to your success, don't forget to bless my name. 